Hey guys, it's Liv here. In today's video, we're gonna be using a team with triple terrain. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We have electric terrain, we have grassy terrain, and we have psychic terrain. Misty terrain, go home, you don't have an ability. If you enjoy this and you wanna see more teams like this, and just any teams in general, or really any of the content, to be honest, like and subscribe for more, and answer the comment question of the day, what's your favorite new ability from this generation? My favorite one's probably Seed Sower. I like a lot that we have more abilities that are trying to introduce terrains, as they've become such a fundamental part of competitive. And I like how this is essentially taking the route that Sandspit did for generation eight, where you have to get attacked first to activate it and while the ability is a little underwhelming and I would prefer just regular grassy terrain uh, it's still a cool addition nonetheless with that said though today's team is triple terrain with iron hands uh, we have a lot of different options here all very terrifying Pokemon starting with Pinkurchin now, I've wanted to use Pinkurchin for a while and I actually think that this had a lot of merit in series 1 but it is a terrifying Pokemon in series 2 you're able to boost Pokemon like iron hands and make them exponentially more terrifying offensively speaking which helps a lot when you're taking on matchups like Jendozo for example which other otherwise would be pretty easily able to sponge iron hands uh, because you're activating quirk drive which is not a stat boost technically uh, despite benefiting your attack stat uh, you actually do end up doing more damage with quirk drive activated similar to how if you activated like a life orb on iron hands you would be able to do more damage to dendozo versus not having an item to begin with uh, it's the same sort of merit here when things happen, it's a great option to potentially flitch teams in Trick Room, with Spark having a 30% chance to paralyze teams. Uh, it's pretty useful considering your only other attacks you're really clicking are Chilling Water and Sucker Punch, though if you want to run this team, you could potentially switch out Spark for Memento if you'd prefer. I did like keeping Pinkurchin alive though, so I figured it wasn't worth it. Magnets here to boost electric damage as well as the Terra Electric, which helps a lot offensively speaking. And with zero speed and brave nature, we are the slowest thing on the field in Trick Room. Unless if something that is already like the 20 or 30 speed mark has like a like a power anklet or something, or if you're fighting an opposing pink urchin, essentially. It's really the only way that you could get speed tied or underpaced. Uh, but even still, it needs to be like a pretty no speed Pokemon. Like with uh with level 50, pink urchin hits only 18 speed. So even something like Arbeliva, for example, which has 39 base, it couldn't even run a power item to underpace you. Up next, we do have our Believer speaking of with the Life Orb and the Seed Sower. Uh, with the investment, this is designed to have the 204 HP, which is the best HP investment you can go with to still benefit Life Orb. The 220 HP has it, so then you should be able to... Oh, this is actually... So I will say this spread was left over from uh, from my our believer that was meant to take on Morning Moon. Uh, I kind of lazily imported the spread to be honest because it's actually meant to benefit off of Gleam and, and uh, Gleam and Terra Blast. This set is neither of those, so it's actually kind of useless to be honest. Uh, but at the same time though, that's just what the intention was for. So, I mean, so that way then Gleam can KO non-Terra Roaring Moon and Terra Blast Rock can KO Terra Flying Roaring Moon. Uh, but this spread is neither, so just uh, that, that's what it was supposed to be for. Kind of a failure though. This Mon still does a lot offensively though. Um, with the zero speed and zero attack, obviously just really to benefit our Believer in Trick Room and take less from Battle Play. That's really it. Uh, overall, really good Dendoza check still, and with Terra Fairy, you're immune to order up, which is great, because you can actually drop the stats efficiently that way. Uh, I was Terra Rock initially with that spread, but Terra Fairy helped a lot. Um, speaking of, Terra Fairy, I got the idea from the initial team that I took the inspiration from. I changed a lot of the spreads around, and you'll see that as we go down the list with stuff like Mousehold, but I'm gonna link the original team down below as well. I forgot to mention that. Up next, we do have Ndidi Female, uh, which is Trick Room, Follow Me, Psychic, and Dazzling Gleam. Essentially, just Fizz Def and Didi. Uh, the spread that I, I took this from initially had a little bit more in Dispidef, but I didn't really see the merit for it. I didn't know what it was supposed to do. So I just went with Max Fizz Def in general. Uh, Terra Psychic helps a lot with getting the Fighting Resistance. This is helpful for Pokemon like Iron Hands that would otherwise get a neutral Drain Punch off on you. Uh, so it's still pretty useful, though you could go with Terra Fairy if you'd like as well. Just I figured may as well boost the Psychic damage. Up next, we do have Arm Rouge with the Terra Grass. This is meant to help taking hits better from stuff like Great Tusk and other ground types. Uh, with the Trick Room, you're able to benefit by just getting the speed control on this team. It helps out with Iron Hands, Pink Urchin, etc. Uh, Heat Wave is a great spread fire option. Psychic and Expanding Force are your two middle ground psychic routes, with Psychic being a good single target against potential wide guard teams with stuff like Hariyama, Pelipper, etc. Meanwhile, Expanding Force, on the other hand, is great for spreads, which is just useful against the majority of the metagame. Uh, the 252 HP is great on this set, since we are running Citrus instead of Life Orb, which means it will have an even amount of HP, which is great for activating Citrus, as we only need to take, I think it's 86, I uh, know, it's. I think it's 96 health, yeah, 96 health, and then we activate our Citrus guaranteed. Flash Fire is great for opposing Armourage matchups, and it also helps with the Grass typing defensively, clearing one of our otherwise 
many weaknesses. Uh, we have Iron Hands with the Safety Goggles set. Uh, now this is a set that I ran on my team that I brought to Orlando. Essentially, with the 12 HP and 92 Fizz Def, this is great for a great Tusk Headlong Rush. Meanwhile, with the 12 HP and 196 Spit F, it's great for after we Terra for Iron Bundle Hydro Pump. Uh, with the 28 Speed, it's just general creeping, stuff like Armory Shy Spam, or creeping anything that would run uh, one speed tier over that. Uh, meanwhile, the 180 Attack is just to help break through teams as well as possible. Final mod on the team we have is Mousehold with the Friend Guard. Uh, this is meant to help with Iron Hands and Armor Rouge, offensively speaking, just taking hits a lot better. Terra Gross is to get around Fake Out or just any other priority that would otherwise try and stop us from pulling off support. Taunt is great to stop opposing support options as well as just other Trick Room options if I don't want to get up Trick Room potentially. Uh, we have Helping Hand to boost damage. Faint is great just as an offensive option helps get through Protect. Uh, we're able to creep with this. I think it's Screamtail. Wait, no, it's uh, no, it's it's Adamant Great Tusk is what we're creeping with this. Uh, meanwhile, we have the rest in Fizz Def, which is just helping us take as hits as well as possible on the Fizz Def side. Um, essentially, this is the same set that we ran in the Sandy Shocks video, so if you remember it from that video, it's the same set that we ran there. I just copy-pasted it because I liked it better than the Technician set they had before. With that said, that's going to be the team today. Hopefully you guys enjoy, and we'll see you guys in the battles. Peace out, guys. Hey guys, this is Liv here, and in today's video, we're going to be using a team built around uh, triple terrain with Iron Hands. If you enjoy, of course, and you want to see more, like and subscribe, and answer the comment question of the day. Uh, let's see. So I, I think I've asked the terrain question already, so I'm not going to ask that. I'm going to, you know what? I know my common question of the day. What's your favorite new ability to come out of this generation? Uh, my favorite one, honestly, Sea Tower is a pretty cool one. I can't lie. I like the, the fact that we have more terrain related abilities because it's been something that I've, I've kind of wanted for a while now. So that would be probably my pick, despite the fact that it's a little underwhelming, but let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below. Uh, we're taking on it for our first game, a team consisting of Scizor, Hydreigon, Iron Moth, Scream Tail, Dragonite, and Amoongus. Okay, so the team is fairly weak to the Iron Hands at the very, le very least. Uh, I think I'm gonna lead off with. I kind of want to lead off with the Iron Hands Mouse, and then we're gonna bring the. I kind of want to bring the Psy Spam in the back. I think it's either Psy Spam in the back, or we're gonna bring like Armourish and Pink Kirchen. I'm not too sure which. I think. I think I'm gonna definitely bring Armourish for sure, and then I think I am gonna bring the Pink Urchin. Just considering the fact they don't really have a ground type here, and besides, really, so, so their only resistances in this team are Hydreigon and Amoongus, and both of those should get pressured pretty easily by my team. My my Iron Hands especially should be able to maul Amoongus, no matter what Terra type it is, so I'm not too concerned there. But good luck and fun to my opponent, and let's see what they go for. They're going to lead off with Hydreigon and Dragonite. Okay, so fairly interesting lead to say the least, but it's still perfectly fine. I'm going to proceed to go for a... I'm going to proceed to go for a Sword Stance here on the Iron Hands. Meanwhile, I'm going to go for... Actually, no, I am going to go for it. Uh, I'm going to go for the Follow Me on Mousehold. Now, I'm anticipating most likely some sort of like an E-Speed and Focus Energy here, which I'm honestly fine with. I don't want to burn the Tarrasal, though, just to avoid the E-Speed. Uh, purely because of the fact that I want to make sure that my opponent is essentially not knowing my Terra type at this point. I don't really think it's worth it to burn that just yet. They're going to have Earth Power Hydreigon. It's going to get a crit and a spidef drop. Go figure. Uh, it's fine. Okay. And then my opponent is going to go for Earthquake on Dragonite. That's fine. That should be chewed, thankfully. Uh, we're able to actually take that hit extremely well. So I will definitely take that. Uh, yeah, we'll just proceed to go for... Uh, we'll just proceed to go for a Drain Punch here and a Hydreigon. Because even if they switch out, I'm fine with that. And then I'm going to proceed to go for another Follow Me here. Uh, even if my opponent does proceed to go for something like uh, an E-Speed, I'm not too concerned with this, in all honesty. Uh, because essentially, the only reason that would actually matter is if they go for E-Speed in the mouse and then go for like an Earth Power, which even still, it wouldn't, I don't think it would KO. While my opponent also would have to dual target, which means that, well, I'm not dual target, but that means they have to stay in essentially, which I'm still fine with. Let's see. So, E-Speed is going to go off. So, yep, that's fine. We know this is not a choice Dragonite. We know that my opponent also decided to stay in with both Pokemon, and neither did Terrastal. They'll go for Dark Pulse, which surely this worked out amazing for me, because Hydreigon is now cleared, and I'm going to get a ton of my health back from this. So I'll definitely take that. Uh, Iron Hands already killing the Hydreigon is huge. I'm kind of shocked they didn't click Earth Power, because I think Earth Power would have been a great play by my opponent there. Uh, not that they really need to put a lot of thought into that one, but it still would have been valuable regardless, I'm sure. I think I'm going to bring in... I kind of want to bring in the Pincurchin here, but I think that Armourish might also have some merit. Uh, Armourish could be useful in terms of, like, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to bring in Armourish. 
And then depending on what they go into, I might bring in Pink Urchin, but it would probably essentially have to be the... Okay, so it's Iron Moth. Yeah, I'm fine with this. I'm definitely fine with this, actually. Um, okay, so what I'm going to proceed to do, I think I'm going to go for the Trick Room here. I'm anticipating most... So they can't really click Heat Wave. Uh, so I'm not going to tear out the Arm Rouge. I'm going to just go for Thunder Punch here. Actually, no, I'm just going to go for Ice Punch here. Just take out the Dragonite. And I'm going to go for a Trick Room here on the armors now i'm anticipating like some sort of sludge wave plus uh or maybe a gleam plus an earthquake most likely uh they're gonna tear the iron moth that's fine not really too concerned they're gonna be tear grass iron moth as well again not really too concerning um okay so as far as my opponent's attack they're gonna go for acid spray that's honestly probably the best thing that could have been clicked there considering I'm, I'm going for the Earthquake as uh, for the Trick Room, which should be sponged pretty well by both my Pokemon. Uh, meanwhile, my Iron Hands should be able to Strain Punch the Iron Moth next turn. So I'm actually pretty okay with this play. This works out amazing for me, actually. Uh, so we'll take that for sure. So Ice Punch is going to go off. That should nail Dragonite. Perfect. That's their best form of priority gone. I'll be, I guess Azor could go for Bullet Punch, but it's going to be a resisted hit into Iron Hands, so I'll take that. Uh... And then, yeah, I just Drain Punch the Iron Moth next turn, and then I probably use Arm Rouge to attack whatever the partner Pokemon is. Uh, if that so happens to be Iron Moth, so be it. It's going to be a Moongus. Okay. So, Moongus is fine, actually. Uh, in fact, I can actually guarantee win this right here. I'm going to go for the Drain Punch. Actually, I'm going to go for the Ice Punch into a Moongus. And I'm going to go for the Terra Grass. This is to get around Spore, potentially. And I'm just going to go for Heat Wave. Uh, now, I might just KO Moongus to begin with. I don't know if I do. But I think there's a good chance. Uh, meanwhile, Iron Moth should just completely crumble to the uh, Arm Rouge. Uh, so I'll definitely take that, actually. That should work out really well for me. Uh, sadly, we did not get the chance to pop the Pink Urch in this game. But truthfully, this wasn't really a good matchup for it. Which is funny, because I've actually had a lot of good ones on, like, Showdown Ladder when testing this team. Uh, but regardless, though, we're going to take the Sludge Bomb with the Iron Hands. We actually end up getting killed by that. So, you know what? Who am I to judge? Maybe... Maybe we will end up using Pink Urchin after all. Um, okay. So that's actually a little bit bad for us. However, it's not really at the end of the world here, because what I can actually manage to do, uh, they're going to take about half from this. That's fine. Um, okay. So what I think I need to do here, I need to go into Pink Urchin. Uh, Pink Urchin should obviously help us with avoiding just any sort of shenanigan right here. Um, and let's, let's figure out the damage calc here. Pink Urchin... Um, let's see, so we're 252, Brave, and we're going for Sucker Punch versus Iron Moth. So Iron Moth shouldn't actually die to this hit. In fact, it's not going to take a ton. This, let's see, Zing Zap versus a Terra Grass set. We have the Magnet. Um, okay, so we're not going to really KO anyway. Uh, what I'm going to proceed to do then, I'm just going to go for the, I'm just going to go for the Zing Zap into the Iron Moth. And I'm going to go for a Heat Wave with a Moon, uh, with a Arm Rouge. Uh, this could potentially also flinch, which is the reason why I'm going to go for it. Uh, we have the crit there. It's fine. Uh, the Sucker Punch would have KO'd next turn anyway. I'm not too concerned. Arm Rouge barely takes this hit. Perfect. And the Heat Wave should just kill both Pokemon. Yeah, it just kills both Pokemon. Worst case scenario, I just click Sucker Punch plus Psychic on uh, with my two Pokemon. And I would have been fine there anyway. So even if Arm, even if we didn't get the roll there with Moongus, I would have still been fine to win this. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so we managed to win game number one, though. Uh, shout out to Pink Hurchin, Pink Hurchin, the GOAT, etc. Um, let's get into game number two. Peace out, guys. Moving on to game number two today, we're taking on a team consisting of Tyranitar, Talonflame, Gyarados, Sylveon, Goldengo, and Brute Bonnet. Okay, so looking at this team, uh, this is a team that should definitely be fairly weak to, well, again, it's fairly weak to Iron Hands. Every team is weak to Iron Hands. Uh, I will say this will probably be more of a size spam back. Uh, or I might even lead, I might lead size spam. I think we're going to probably lead off with Talonflame. I'm just not sure what the partner Pokemon will be as the issue. Uh, I'm going to definitely bring Mousehold, Iron Hands on lead. And I think I am going to go for size spam in the back. I just need to clear Tyranitar and Bonnet. But even if I don't clear Bonnet, uh, it's not too big of a concern for Indeedee. It's really just, I just need to play Armor Rouge and Hands really well to clear Bonnet. I think that Gyarados definitely benches here. Uh, which I'm fine if it doesn't, to be honest. And I think that... I think the other bench is one of Goldengo or one of the Darks. They might go dual Dark, and then I think Sylveon definitely comes. My team will have a bit of issues with, like, a Yawn set or even, like, a Terra Ground set. So I do anticipate that one for sure. We're going to see Sylveon, uh, not Sylveon, Gyarados and Talonflame lead. I was so in denial about Gyarados coming, I thought it was Sylveon. 
Uh, honestly, the Intimidate from Gyarados isn't really a huge concern. What I could proceed to do, I'm just going to go for the Follow Me here, and I'm going to go for the Thunder Punch right in the Talon Plane. Actually, am I? Yeah, because I'm, I'm assuming that Gyarados is either going to go for like a Terra Ground, or the Talon Plane is going to go for like a Terra Ghost. Uh, they might not go for either for what it's worth, but I'm anticipating one of the two. Uh, realistically, Talon Flame's definitely going to go for Tailwind here. They are going to proceed to Trust to turn one. This is fine. And it is going to be the Gyarados. Where I'm, I'm anticipating Terra Ground. Terra Ground. Perfect. Okay. So, really glad I did not Thunder Punch that spot. Um, okay. So, they're going to definitely go for, like, a Earthquake here, plus, like, a Tailwind, which I'm fine with that. Um, my mouse should realistically take this pretty well. I just wanted to redirect in case they dual targeted. They're going to go for will -O actually. So, will -O is also fine. Uh, because that means they're not valuing Tailwind, which should end up actually being really bad for them later on. Uh, mostly in case of, like, depending on how slow they are on something like Tyranitar or Bonnet, it might actually make the difference between the Iron Hands cowing them and not. So, I'll definitely take that. I don't mind the Earthquake here, even with Terra Ground, yeah, it's still doing negligible damage. And Talonflame should still take a lot from this. Perfect. Okay. So, what I'm going to proceed to do here, I'm going to go for the Follow Me. And I'm going to go for the Drain Punch. Actually, I'm going to go for the... I'm going to go for the Drain Punch, yeah, into Gyarados. This should help me get some more health back on my Gyarados. And from here, Talonflame's probably going to... I feel like Talonflame's going to probably go for, like, a Brave Bird. Maybe a Tailwind. Uh, it's going to go for Heat Wave, actually. It's trying to get the Burn Through Spread, which I'm fine with that. Uh, Earthquake is going to go off. This should... I think we still take this with Hands. Mouse is definitely gone, but I think Hands might barely take this one. Um... Come on, come on, hands, perfect. Okay, so hands does barely take that. Okay, so we're gonna be able to get off at least a somewhat okay drain punch here. Oh wow, that does nothing. Okay, um, fuck, that's not great. Okay, so we're gonna bring in the armory here, and I'm gonna proceed to go for the, I think I'm gonna go for the Terra Grass. Uh, now for what it's worth, they might just try and, I'm gonna go for Trick Room and Terra Grass. Yeah. And then I'm going to go for Ice Punch into Gyarados. Now, this could still end up being pretty bad. This is kind of a gamble, but I need to essentially bank off the fact that Talonflame will not attack me. Uh, now, if Talonflame does go for an attack here with, like, a Brave Bird or something, then I'm kind of screwed. But I don't think I was winning the game anyway by not going for Terra, because Gyarados would have still done enough damage because of the non-resisted Earthquake. And even if I brought in a DD, I still don't think I had a chance of winning. Uh, they're going to go for Taunt. Oh, Taunt's pretty bad. Okay, Taunt's definitely not great, but still not the worst in the world because at the very least uh what i can do i can proceed to go for follow me on talent play on on uh, on indeed next turn and then just go for an expanding force and that should still be fine actually so i'm gonna kind of have to just bank off of that um again not the worst situation in the world because indeed should still be a good way to polish this up if nothing else so, yeah, I'm going to go for Follow Me. This should draw in the Talon Flame hit. And the, the Gyarados Earthquake is just going to happen, which I'm fine with that. Uh, but the Expanding Force should KO both Pokemon here, so I'm pretty fine. Uh, the worst thing a Talon Flame could do, I guess. So, let's see. So, it's Taunt, Willow, Heat Wave. Does this thing really not have Brave Bird? I mean, I'm fine if it doesn't have Brave Bird. I'm, gonna ever, I'm actually going to go for... Yeah, I'm gonna, I kind of have to go for the Follow Me. I know that the Trick Room is probably a higher payoff, but in case of the fact that Talonflame has Brave Bird, I can't really, I can't really gamble that. So I do need to, I do need to redirect in. Uh, and if they're gonna go for Taunt, that's fine. I'm not too concerned. They are gonna go for Taunt again. Okay. So at the very least, uh, we would have probably been in that situation either way of Trick Room being stalled. So, not like it changes a lot in all honesty. Talonflame being gone is decent for us. The, the Gyarados being Terra Ground as well. At least isn't uh, there's a lot worse tears that could have came out of this, uh, but it's gonna be rough trying to take on Tyranitar if that came. If it's Bonnet that came, I could still manage this, but if Tyranitar came, that's gonna be rough. Brute Bonnet, okay. So I can manage Bonnet at least. So I'm gonna proceed to go for a Heat Wave here. Heat Wave still has Burn Chance, obviously, and then I'm gonna go for Gleam. Uh, Gleam should also be at least a good enough hit. Uh, I don't know, Bonnet could still be a threat. Bonnet could still definitely be a threat, but since. While it doesn't really get a good dark move to hit me, at least, I mean, it, that's the thing. Bonnet won't really be a huge threat offensively, but it's going to be a threat just alone in, in putting my uh, my Ndidi to sleep. That'll, that'll alone be a pretty big threat. So we're going to take at least a little bit of damage. Ah, that's better than I would have thought it would be, to be honest. Uh, close combat's going to go up. Okay, yeah, so close combat's the attack here of choice. That's fine. That should activate my citrus at least, and dropping the Bonnet's defense actually helps a lot here as well. 
Ah, uh, so maybe I can KO the Bonnet, actually, before it gets up a Spore on Ndidi. And that might be my saving grace. However, there's still definitely situations I can get screwed over by this. Uh, Bonnet, thankfully, took a lot of damage from that hit. The Heat Wave is going to go off here, and Gyarados avoids. Eh, not a huge concern. Bonnet being gone is probably better, because that means I can click Expanding Force in the next turn. Okay, so it depends. If Tyranitar is here, I lose. I lose objectively, but I lost anyway. If Sylveon or Goldengo is here, I can maybe manage. Tyranitar is here? Yeah, okay, so I just, I lose the game. I can't really pressure Tyranitar at all. Ah, uh, so that's, that's, yeah, that's game. Uh, we'll go for, we'll go for Psychic into Gyarados. Well, actually, we're gonna go for Heat Wave, and then I'm gonna go for the Psychic into Gyarados. And we're gonna just see what we can KO here. Uh, maybe I could burn Tyranitar and, like, dodge a couple of Rock Slides, which is really, sadly, what I need to bank off of here. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna have to see. Gyarados will definitely just try, probably go for, yep, Waterfall, because I, I assume they didn't want to hurt their own Tyranitar, which is fine, actually. It keeps Armors a little healthier. Um, Tyranitar's gonna go for Crunch here. They're gonna try and KO Ndidi. Okay, still fine. Uh, essentially what I need, I need to burn both these Pokemon. I need to burn both. We're going to, some, Tyranitar's missing the Heat Wave. That's the mon I objectively needed to hit a lot more. So... Yeah, no, that's that's game. Oh, that's so game. Because Tyranitar paces us anyway. I could have, for what it's worth, went for Trick Room here. But even if I went for Trick Room, I mean, I, I only had, like, one attack. And if I if I still missed that Heat Wave, I wasn't off anyway. Uh, but yeah, this Arm Rouge is going to take too much. And then Crunch should KO us. So we're going to be 1-1. One one. That's not a huge concern. Uh, we're going to try and win game number 3. So, yeah, I'm going to see you guys in game number 3. Where hopefully we'll get a bet better showing. Uh, especially with Pinkurchin. I'd love to show off Pinkurchin more. Until then, though, peace out, guys. Moving on to our final game of the day, we're taking on an opposing size spam, which consists of Indeedy, Armourouge, Brute, Bonnet, Torkoal, Iron Hands, and Flutter Main. Uh, so at the very least, looking at this, I'm going to probably end up leading... Well, against every size spam, I actually always lead off with Mouse Hands. Uh, typically, there are other situations where I might lead off with size spam, but against against opposing size spam, no, I, I always lead off with this. This is like my safety net lead. Because essentially, I can usually, usually get up uh, a way to stop Trick Room. Meanwhile, I can also usually KO one of, if not both, Pokemon on the second turn running up. I'm going to definitely bring... So I think I'm going to bring... Uh, probably going to be... Arm Rouge. Yeah, it kind of has to be Arm Rouge. I would bring Arbeleve and go for Terra Fairy, but I need Hands to be the Terra Mon. It, again, it's one of those things that always happens in these size spam matchups. I always need to go for Terra Hands. It's really enough. The Mirror is always the by far most predictable route. I don't know if anyone else who, who does a lot of VGC who's, who might be watching this has that same issue, where like your mirrors are usually like the most straightforward games, but typically the, there's not really a lot of variance. Yep, because usually I'm always led up against with size spam. This has actually happened every single time I've played size spam. It's always been the lead against my hands plus mouse core. So I'll take that. We're going to immediately go for the taunt on, we're gonna go for the taunt on Arm Rouge in case it goes for Trick Room, because I could see a scenario where we might get a, we might get a not, uh, not, uh, we're going to essentially either get a taunt on the armory, which would be good to stop Trick Room, or we're going to see the Ndidi go for Follow Me, and we can at least stop it from redirecting later on, uh, which does mean that after the Trick Room goes up, we can always just KO the armory anyway. I might also just go for Expanding Force, which is fine, because if Trick Room doesn't go up, I can still put a lot of pressure on that Pokemon, so I'm not too concerned, and I can also clear terrain next turn anyway by sacking Mouse, so I'm pretty fine with any out that this has. We're gonna see the follow me go off. Uh, typically, this is how the exchange happens, but at the same time, I prefer avoiding any sort of random trick room just in case. Uh, so we're going to see that the Indeedy ends up getting taunted, so it cannot click follow me anymore. Meanwhile, the Arm Rouge is gonna get up an expanding force here, which I'm fine with, because we'll actually get up our Sword Stance here. So we'll take that. So looking at turn two, I'm going to proceed to go for a. Let's see, so I'm gonna go for a Helping Hand here. Yeah, I'm gonna go for Helping Hand into Iron Hands, and then I'm going to go for, actually, no, no, no. No, 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 So I'm gonna go for the Pinkurchin here, because even if uh, even if the Armor goes for Expanding Force into the Hand slot, it's only gonna be a neutral hit, and it's not gonna have terrain boosting anymore. Uh, so it'll do a lot of dam a lot less damage. The Indeedy and Armor would essentially need to dual target my Hand spot, so this should be pretty fine. And clearing the Ndidi for later on will be valuable, as this will also give me a lot of health back. So we're going to boost our Quirk Drive up. This is a guaranteed KO. I know that I know the Calc is a guaranteed KO. Uh, Gleam is going to go off here. It's fine. It does no damage to hands. And the armor should guarantee not be able to KO with Expanding Force. 
So, yep, despite being single target, it's going to do even less damage than it was during a spread. Perfect. And Didi is now also gone, so their Psychic Terrain is cleared, which is perfect. It, it really is just perfect. There's no other better way to say it. Uh, because now I can actually go for Sucker Punch into really any of these Pokemon, whether it's the Arm Rouge or Fluttermane comes out, I might go into Fluttermane. Uh, meanwhile, I can just go for a Thunder Punch into the other Pokemon and be pretty fine. So it's already looking pretty great for me. Uh, the best part is too, is even if the Bonnet comes in, I can avoid Spore on my Pincurchin because Electric Train is up and my Pokemon can't go to sleep. We're going to go for the Sucker Punch into Arm Rouge here. Meanwhile, I'm going to go for a Drain Punch into Bonnet. Even if they go for Terra, that's fine. I'm not really too concerned with Terra. Uh, even if they go for an attack, that's fine. I'm not really too concerned with an attack here. We're going to see that the Trassel goes off. It's most likely Bonnet. Ah, uh, yep, it, it is Bonnet. That's fine. It's going to be Poison. Okay. So Poison was pretty expected if they were going to go for Terra here. Um, just because it obviously gets them the Fighting Resist. I'm still not too concerned with this, though. Because even with the even with the Poison Terra, I'm still going to get off a substantial amount of damage between the Quark Drive boost as well as the plus two. Ooh. Okay, that's actually concerning. That's concerning as fuck, because Arm Rouge might just be able to KO me anyway. Uh, it's gonna go for Armor Cannon into Pincurchin. Uh, it's definitely Pincurchin with how angled it is. Yep, okay, so Pincurchin's gone. That might be concerning. If I had Thunder Punch Arm Rouge, I might have been fine. Ah, uh, but ooh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, we're gonna at least be faster with hands, and that Drain Punch did a surprising amount for what it's worth. So I'm not too concerned here. Um, So looking at the situation thankfully i'm immune to spore which is good ah ugh. we're gonna go for mouse because i need to redirect i need to redirect and kale that fuck thankfully we we preserve the mouse instead of just letting it get sacked that helps a lot with our whole situation here because i can go for follow me and then go for thunder punch even if they go for like a spore i'm fine with that because essentially what no they couldn't even spore because of the train being up so i don't even know why i was scared of that because terrain will block that every time uh, they're going to go for Sucker Punch on the, well, yeah, whatever they were going to go for it on, it's going to go into the Bonnet, uh, into the Mouse, which is great. Expanding Force in the Mouse is fine, too. We're going to KO the Arm Rouge with Thunder Punch, which is amazing for us. Uh, so it should just be Bonnet plus Filler, and whatever that Filler is, I'm okay with that, because my Iron Hands is fairly healthy at this point. And I'll still have Arm Rouge, which Arm Rouge puts on a lot of pressure anyway in Bonnet at this point. I just go for Raw Psychic, and I'm pretty set there. So, we're going to bring an armor here. Meanwhile, my opponent's going to probably go into Torkoal. I feel like it's going to be... Yep, Torkoal. Okay. So, Torkoal coming in is fine. Uh, Torkoal is like the one Pokemon where I'm going to actually just target that instead. Because this could actually go for Earth Power. Uh, well, uh, never mind. Uh, so, it's Attack Titan. Okay. So, I guess the question is, is how much do I... I'm going to go for Psychic here. I'm going to go for Psychic here. And I'm going to go for Drain Punch into Torkoal. Uh, the Strain Punch into Torkoal should KO between the Terrain as well as the plus two. I'm really not concerned at all with KOing Torkoal. We're going to take a Sucker Punch with hands. That's fine. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't actually target my Arm Rouge, but I'm pretty okay with that fact, actually, because essentially I can KO Bonnet now, and Torkoal can guarantee not KO both my Pokemon. Uh, it's either going to go for a spread option that's going to get walled by Arm Rouge, or it's going to go for a single target option. It's only going to KO one thing, and the other Pokemon KOs anyway. Now, I will say, if they had Sucker Punch the Arm Rouge, I might have been screwed if they Earth Powered on my hands, but even still, it wasn't really a guarantee anyway. Uh, because as we see there, yeah, that only does about 100. So that wasn't even a real guarantee KO regardless. But it would have been a lot better of a situation for them. Because they could have went for the Sucker Punch into me this turn. Went for Earth Power. And that might have actually been enough. Depending on rolls. It would depend on damage rolls. Uh, but yeah, you know what? 2-1 for the day. We'll take that. The little terrain happened to work out pretty well for us. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And you know what? If you did, like and subscribe for more. Let me know down below what teams you want to see next. I have a few on the back burner. And answer the comment question of the day. What is your favorite new ability from this generation? Shout out to our channel members, of course, being Josh AK Ultra Player, Mia, Zeke Zero, Matt O'Shea, Koemi, and Slade. Your guys' support on the channel is greatly appreciated. And if you guys want to become a channel member for only a couple dollars a month, you get some bonus content twice a month, which will feature different ladder showcases with stuff you guys will pick. Poll is going to go up for tomorrow for the first one that we're going to be doing, which will go live on the 25th. And with that said, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace out, guys.